Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. This is the very first series of Apache Airflow. We'll be going through some of the background, looking at what was the world before Airflow, then a little bit of briefing on what Airflow is and some terminologies, and then we will be looking at some core components and then usages, where it is being used, and then finally we'll be ending up with some nice demo. So let's start with the background and say a developer wants to run a piece of code on a scheduled basis. So one could end up with some kind of a script written in Python, Bash, or any of your favorite language. We could like deploy it anywhere and it would, it would run and make sure it triggers whatever it needs to do on some specific time duration. Or the other way is you can simply run your script through clone jobs. So let's take an example where you take the data from file X and you do some aggregations on it and then you store it in some destination. So yeah, I mean, running this simple piece of code as a cron job is not a problem. One can easily monitor this, one can easily get access to the status of this and how things are going, like everything, everything should be all right if speaking about only single cron job. But later sometimes the business demands more data aggregation. You'll say, yeah, sure, why not? We can spin up more multiple prune jobs, right? And we have like aggregation system, which is uh, running on different schedules. So each of them has to have its own cone job, right? So good enough. So think of one day you have like 100 of these cone jobs running on hourly or daily basis, doing some data aggregation from different sources, right? So we have to like spend extra effort on setting up the triggers on the job statuses in order to let us know either the job failed or succeeded or what is going on with the jobs because you know now we have like 100 of them and upon failures of any job the debug operation might involve like find out which job failed why it failed like investigate the job logs spend effort on automatically rerunning the failed jobs and what not right so a developer would say hmm Tell you what, why not build a homemade orchestration system that is going to monitor and maintain my these 100 plus phone jobs. So one would end up something like this, right? The system will gonna have access to all of the running clone jobs. It will gonna check the job statuses, send alerts on the failures, and also gonna manage some VRAN mechanisms and of course whatnot. So in this case, we have to like spend effort on maintaining both of these systems, the homemade orchestration system, as well as all of our phone jobs. But wait, things don't end here. Moving along further down the line, the business requirements change. Now we are being asked to combine the data from the aggregated data of file X and Y. So the things now look like this. And now we have like some tasks depending on the other tasks. So we now have dependencies of tasks on each other. And now we have to like write our own custom logics that this task only gets executed when X and Y completes, etc. So things are going to look something like this. We now have this whole dependency manager wrapped up on top of this cone jobs. And doing so, it becomes so complex that you are going to end up managing this whole system and we're gonna have less time to work on and maintain the business logics which are being run inside each of these clone jobs. So let us list on all of the challenges and the problems that we are going to face uh, in the system that we described before. First off, we definitely need to have a monitoring system that is going to tell us that whether the job failed or succeeded. Second is, yes, as I said, we have to manage the failures, right? So based on these monitorings, we have to send alerts on failures, maybe retries, how many times it has to retry and then some timeout mechanisms and all that stuff, you know. Then dependencies, check whether upstream data is available or not, job one ran after job two, etc. Then the backfills, sometimes it's really important to rerun some historic data integrations. Then scalability, because in this case, you don't have any centralized entity to manage the jobs. Then last but not least, the deployment. How easy it is to deploy this whole workflow into a new fresh environment. Well, guess what? Airflow does that all for you. By definition, it is a platform to programmatically author, schedule, and monitor workflows. 
So Airflow literally does every single thing that I've described in here. And of course, definitely much, much more than this, including all of the problems and challenges that we have discussed over here. Speaking of some terminologies, Airflow has tasks. So in this case, we have three tasks, aggregate data, file X is one task, then the task two, to aggregate data from file Y, and then combine aggregated data as task three. And the most important terminology here is called DAG, Directed Acyclic Graph. The core components involve web server and the scheduler, which sits at the heart of Airflow. The scheduler is responsible for making sure that all of the tasks and DAGs are running on their specified times, and it also takes controls of the dependency management. All of the tasks that needs to run are being triggered from the scheduler to the workers, where usually in the production level, we have like multiple workers running in parallel. And then we have our task execution logs. This is the space where Airflow stores all of the task logs, whether it could be locally stored or remotely in S3 or anywhere. Then we have a web UI, which is being driven by the web server, where the users can interact with the DAGs and the tasks. Airflow is used to automate the things like running ETL pipelines, data ingestion pipelines, machine learning pipelines, predictive data pipelines, as well as general purpose schedulings, including database backups, etc. This is how the Airflow web server user interface looks like. You're looking at the landing page where you can see the list of tags. You can view the tag runs and the schedule timings and what time it last ran and the recent task activities inside the tag. And this is the DAG specific view where you can view all of the tasks inside the DAG. Tasks are being filtered by coloring schemes representing which operator they are using. And the outline color of the task represents the status of the task. In this case, we have like two which are success and pink which is the skipped. We are going to be looking at the detailed view of this user interface once we will implement our first DAG which is going to be coming on our upcoming videos. So stay tuned guys. And I hope this introductory video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, feel free to write them down in the comments below and I will try my best to reply them. Thank you guys. I will see you in the next video. Bye.